Oprah, how are you? Hi there, James. I'm well, and you? Yeah, good, good. How's the weather in Miami, should I need to ask? It's very hot. Very hot. Okay. Got the air conditioner all cranked up in the office? Yeah. <laughs> hey, so Uganda, you know, there's a good, the bad, the ugly on Uganda. Where do you want to start here today? <laughs> well, I've been reporting about some new areas that uh, opened up in Uganda in the Karamoja region. Uh, this is where Karamoja Bell, uh, the famous elephant hunter, uh, took some just tremendous trophies years back. And the area there re reopened recently. Uh, there's an, a number of operators that are working together uh, to uh, work in that area. And I, I had a story about it in, in the August issue. So imagine my surprise and amazement when I get a copy of a letter that was sent out by the Uganda Wildlife uh, Authority, the, their executive director, Moses Mapesa, uh, telling all the Uganda operators that they were suspending hunting, uh, sport hunting throughout the country. That was uh, uh, in early August. Uh, so I immediately called uh, a number of operators uh, down in, in Uganda and they all told me yes that they had gotten the letter. Uh, they were all in, in absolute shock. Many of them were in the field conducting hunts. Uh, the letter said that um, uh, the, the suspension was with immediate effect, save for any clients who may already be in Uganda and on safari. Well, everybody had clients in the bush and were hunting. So there were a lot of questions. The letter was not clear about uh, their their reasons. It, it named a, a number of things uh, from uh, concerns with illegal hunting to... Uh, mutual benefit sharing to a concern about uh, establishing quotas. Uh, they wanted to have some kind of scientific method agreed upon to establish quotas for all the areas. Uh, the operators were, as you can imagine, quite up in arms about this. Uh, they all have contracts for their concessions and quotas that were set by the Uganda Wildlife Authority. Uh, so some of them were, were questioning whether they had the authority to do this or not. Immediately, I get on the phone and I call the Uganda Wildlife Authority. And Mr. Mapesa, I was told, was out of the country. And there was somebody else sitting in his stead uh, who I was told was the community conservation uh, coordinator. And I spoke with him and he confirmed yes that hunting was suspended throughout the entire country, that it was not just in some concessions, it was the whole country. And that the reason was that uh, they were looking at the way that they established quotas and that they wanted to come to some kind of an agreed scientific method for establishing quotas and to do a census of the game populations. So naturally I asked, okay, so when is the census going to be done and when do you all anticipate lifting the suspension? He had no clue uh, and basically said that uh, there was just no other information available. Yeah, yeah. So, you, know, you know, Barbara, uh, one of the things that I find a difficulty with is that when, when the information like this comes out, uh, I, as an individual hunter, may attempt to call my outfitter, or worse yet, attempt to call someone in the government to verify this particular type of information. If you're in the United States, you've got a good chance of getting a nice, clear answer. It's been my experience that if you try to go to the government in a foreign country, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. You're not going to get the accurate information that you want. I think one of the th one of the purposes of Barbara Crown is to go verify information based upon the best source you can find and give that to the public to to look at. Now, that's that's the way I see it, Barbara. Well, that certainly is what I strive to do. And at this point, uh, I found it was necessary to at least warn my subscribers, hey, this is what's going on. 
but there's the possibility that the suspension is not correct. It's not a correct reflection of what's going on. The outfitters are just finding out about it. Some of them are in the bush. They're going to make some inquiries and see if they can get some straight answers from uh, the authorities in Kampala. So don't jump to any conclusions. Don't take any rash decisions. Don't panic. Don't cancel your safaris. Check in with your operator. Be ready to be flexible. And let's see what uh, develops from here on. Right. Uh, and that's well, what know, I advised uh, my readers on, at the on time to some good to do. news, though, Barbara. On to some good news. You sent me some photographs, and, and I'm going to run a little slideshow here. Uh, the hunting in Uganda is good. <laughs> it's excellent. It is Roll excellent. Some these of those photographs slides. are from the Karamoja area, and both of these hunters told me they saw with their own eyes a 50-inch Cape buffalo. Uh, they've also seen a very large elephant, which right now they, they cannot hunt there, uh, and l just lots and lots of game. Uh, so, yes, hunting in Uganda, it, remember, Uganda was once called the Pearl of Africa, and there was a reason for that. Uh, the hunting there is fantastic. Uh, there are wonderful opportunities. Uh, it is an emerging, or ra rather, I should say, a re-emerging hunting destination. And in regards to that suspension that I was telling you about, I found out more inquiries, more t tracking this down, more wrangling with the, the folks in, in, at the uh, wildlife authority there. Turns out they have a new board of trustees, and the board of trustees was trying to make some, shall we say, housekeeping uh, changes and that led to some tensions and miscommunications internally and that's what led to this letter the letter actually was supposed to be limited to a number of uh, a number of, of concessions just a few of the concessions and it's not clear whether uh, this will be uh, into 2011 or not uh, there is a suspension on new licenses for new areas uh, and uh, the suspension for, there's a suspension on quota for 2011. Uh, so they're working on doing a quota based on a new uh, method of uh, doing a census and, and coming up with a, a quota for each area. So anybody who's booked to Uganda, uh, you should go to my re website, www.huntingreport.com, see the latest email bulletin there on... Uh, the suspension in Uganda, uh, and which areas are affected. And then just check in with your operator if, if you're booked in those areas, and stay flexible. Uh, things may shake out in time for the 2011 season. Yeah, I, actually, I think the best way to state this would be that there, there are two ways of checking, and you should use both of them, no matter what country you're going to. Number one, go to Barbara Crown and find out what she has on her website pertaining to the area you're going to that would be a good source to go to probably the first source to go to secondly after you have obtained that information go ahead and contact your outfitter but remember your outfitter could be out in the bush as you said earlier and he may not have the most relevant information and whenever i'm in doubt barbara what i do is i check your website and if i have further questions i'll just call you because i know you'll answer the phone and give me the best information that you possibly have on that area. And, and trying to do this yourself, I think, uh, as, a, as a hunter, uh, trying me calling the governments over there and people that I know, uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's asking for way more information and probably poor information, and I don't mean that personally, but go to someone like Barbara Crown who has established relations with people in foreign countries who she can go to, and she'll give you a pretty good answer to your question. Or if she's not sure, this is what you can count on. Barbara will say, I'm not sure, but I'll get back to you, and I'll let you know. Yeah, I will. I know you'll do that. Thank you, Barbara. I appreciate you coming on. See you again next week, I hope. We'll be here. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.